Hi everyone, it's Alexis with Project Management Made Simple. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you if you have any specific PM questions, Agile, Scrum questions. I have coaching services that I'm offering, so I'll have a link below that you can use to book some one-on-one -on -one time with me. Now, let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to be comparing the PMP certification with the CSM certification. These are two certifications that I have and I decided to get while I've been a project manager and now more form formally an agile coach along my career to help me in my career in terms of advancing as well as just being able to test my knowledge. And so with that, these two certifications are very different <laughs> for quite a few reasons, but I can see why someone would ask this question because there are some factors to consider in terms of if you were deciding between these two. And so with that, the first thing that I'll highlight is the price. When we look at the PMP to sit for this exam, it's a certification that is offered through the PMI, the Project Management Institute. And so with that, if you are a member, it's going to cost, a thing, I think around roughly $400. And then if you are a non-member, it's going to cost around $550 versus the CSM, the Certified Scrum Master Certification, is offered through the Scrum Alliance. And the cost of this is going to range from $500 to $1,000. And that's because in order to get this exam, you have to sign up for a course. And so that brings me into my next factor to consider between these two exams is the prep time as well as the materials that it takes to prepare for this given, uh, for the given certification. And so in terms of preparing for the CSM, you have to sign up for a course that is going to entail at least 14 contact hours. Whereas the PMP is going to require you to have professional working experience as well as contact as well as education hours before you sit for your exam. And so just from that perspective alone, the CSM is definitely more approachable because anyone can visit the Scrum Alliance website and sign up for the exam. In order to do that for the PMP, you have to go through a process of applying to be able to even sit for the exam, where you provide proof of your project management experience. Now, I will say when you are sitting for the PMP exam, you do not have to have had the formal title of, project, of, a, of being a project manager to sit for this exam. It's just that you have to have project management experience. The CSM, you do not have to apply to sit for this exam. You simply take the course and then you get access to be able to sit for the exam. Now, in terms of the time that it takes to prepare for the exam, as I mentioned with the CSM, it's going to be those, those hours, the 14 hours. Now, in addition to the professional experience and the contact hours, you have to study <laughs> for each of these exams. I would say for the PMP exam, even with all of that experience, there is an added layer to it. That added layer is this big book of knowledge, this project management body of knowledge. Now this is the, the fifth edition, and this is from when I actually sat for the exam in 2016. At this point, I'm not sure what the latest edition is, but I will have a link to the PMI as well as to the Scrum Alliance. You can check out the official documentation as it is, um, as it is provided when it comes to each of these certifications. But even after all that experience, you still have to go through and understand a 500 page book. So <laughs> there is a lot, it's, there's a lot of work that it takes to, to sit for the PMP exam. And for me, it took three months of preparing. I attended a boot camp for which I went to that boot camp. I think it was two days out of the week for mm, two or three hours each. And then I studied every day for two hours, wherein I read through this, this book is not fun to read through. It's kind of, it, it's dry. It, it's, it's like reading a user manual. It's, it's kind of dry, um, <laughs> but it's very, very informative. And even to this day, I still find myself referring to some of the content here. Specifically, I can't find the page. I think I might have still had it. Um, this that said project management, so it says project management process group and knowledge area mapping. And so what this is, is, and this is not meant to be a video on the PMBOK guide, but just to give you some more in insight on what it takes to get through, you know, and prepare for this exam, 
you have to understand the knowledge areas. At this time, there were 13 of them and then the five process groups and how they overlap and all of the, and all of the activities that ultimately have to be completed as a result of any given project. And so the Pinbot guide, as you can even see from that standpoint, it's extensive. There's a lot of information in here. But when we are talking about the CSM and sitting for that exam, that is wherein you are being tested for your understanding of the scrum guide. The scrum guide is not long at all. I believe it's about 13 to 15 pages long compared to this one being 500 pages long. So for to be able to prepare for that exam, from my experience, because I took that exam after years of being a scrum master, all I needed to do was take the course and then I took the exam right after the course. For someone who is new to project, or excuse me, for someone who is new to scrum, for someone who is new to scrum and hasn't been a scrum master, has no experience, of course, it's going. it may take you longer. You may need to, in addition to taking that course, study the scrum guide inside and out a few times before you feel confident enough to sit for the exam. But in any case, that still doesn't compare to what it takes to sit for the PMP exam. Now, another thing to consider uh, of which I've been alluding to is the complexity. So on a score of, I would say on a scale of one to five, the PMP is a five. For all of the reasons that I've listed up until this point, it is most certainly a five. But it also has a really good payoff from my personal experience. So I have a whole video dedicated to answering the question, is the PMP worth it? So I will have that linked below. But as a preview, the answer from my personal standpoint is yes, it is worth it. Now the CSM I also feel like is worth it. But in terms of complexity, I would give it maybe a two. If that, again, this is someone who I took this exam after already having had professional experience. And from that standpoint, it was really helpful in correcting some of the things that I was doing that maybe wasn't scrum or maybe was specifically called out as something that um, shouldn't be done as a part of scrum. And so I would say even from that standpoint, it's helpful to take these exams because they help to correct maybe some of those things that you do on a day to day to day to day that are maybe harmful to you know the project or to the process and then they also help highlight the, the things that you are doing well so i've said this in my video where i talked about is the pmp worth it but it's the same thing with the csm i felt similarly that it really helped to affirm that the things i was doing um, correctly were correct and so in terms of complexity, as I mentioned, I would say that, that, that the CSM is a two with the PMP definitely being a five. <laughs> Maybe like on a score of one to five or a scale of one to five, I'm gonna put the PMP as a 10. It's, it's a challenge. It is definitely a challenge. I am fortunate that I was able to pass on the first try, but that's not necessarily the same story for everyone. Some people, it takes them longer to prepare for the exam and it may take them a couple of tries before they pass. So two more things to consider, and maybe these are just more informative at this point and may not sway your decision in terms of if you decide to take either one of these exams. Now, personally, I would say if you can take both of them, take both of them. I'm fortunate that the companies that I've worked for have paid for both of these, uh, for me to get each of these certifications. So that has been great. If that's the case for you, or just even if you're going to you know, personally pay for this and you can, I would say from personal experience that I find them um, having, I would say from personal experience that they are both beneficial to have. Now pieces of information, I'm looking over at my board here. So the CSM has 50 questions. You have to answer 37 of those correctly to pass, which gives you a score or a percentage of around 74% to pass. And you are given 60 minutes, so an hour to take the exam. Versus the PMP is more extensive. When I took the exam, it was 200 questions. It's now 180 questions and they give you four hours to take the exam. Now, from what I recall and some in the research that I've done, there is not a, a published number through the PMI of how many questions you have to 
answer correctly to pass and that was the case even in 2016. The rule of thumb that I've commonly seen is that if you're taking, for instance, practice exams for your PMP, I highly recommend taking practice exams, is to aim for anywhere between 80 to 90 percent. Now, when I took my PMP, I'd have to look back on the website to see what the percentage was that I had for passing. If I can get that information, I will share that. But ultimately, you can see that's something else to consider. It's four hours long to take the, take the exam. And I wanna say you maybe were able to take two breaks. Now, now that they are offering in an online environment, I'm not sure if that changes if you can take breaks or not. Um, but ultimately, you can see 60 minutes versus four hours, 50 questions versus 180 questions. Definitely different in terms of the, definitely different in terms of how your how extensive the test is going to be and then the last thing to to note about these two certifications is going to be the maintenance so when you get these certifications it's not just you have them and you get to have the badge and you don't have to do anything else you have to maintain them so these you know these certifications are being updated i mentioned that i got my PMP certification in 2016. I got my CSM in 2021, so really recent. And the content, uh, the content for which you're being tested for can change. It doesn't just remain static and it should change. The PMP exam, for instance, I would say one of the biggest notable changes that they've had is they are formally acknowledging both hybrid as well as agile approaches to project management. The PMP for the longest has really heavily focused on traditional project management and has left out the conversation of Agile. And so there's been a, a cost to that, right? Project managers, when we, find, when we find ourselves in Agile environments, there's a lot of questions that come up of where does the project manager fit? And so the PMI now has within the PMP, or sorry, within the PMBOK guide, and then you, you to when you pass your PMP, Within the PMBOK guide, they have information surrounding uh, agile environments or surrounding agile approaches to project management. And so with that, in terms of maintaining your certification, you need to have what are called PDUs, professional development units, and you need to have 60 of those. And so you can get those a variety of ways through education, through reading articles. I get them through these videos that I provide. You can get them through speaking engagements and even the time that of just you working in the project management profession, you can get PDUs for that as well. Now for the CSM, instead of getting PDUs, you get what are called SEUs and these are scrum education units. And so you only need 20 of these to, to maintain your certification as a CSM and again, there's various ways that you can get these um, get these credits. So this was a video comparing the CSM with the PMP, the Certified Scrum Master Certification, with the Project Management Professional Certification. As I've mentioned, if someone were to ask me, you know, would you looking back, Alexis, would you take both of these exams? I would definitely say yes. There is quite a bit of although I am working in more agile environments now and most notably as an Agile coach, I still find that my experience and my knowledge of project management is very helpful and I would say necessary for me to be successful even in Agile, in agile environments. I wanna thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give this video a like and feel free to leave any questions below in the comments and I will talk to you all in my next one.